Hey everyone, welcome back to Food Good. Today I'm going to show you how to make a classic and authentic bolognese sauce. This rich and flavoursome sauce is sure to become a favourite in your kitchen. So let's get started. Also, be sure to hang around until the end because I'll share with you some tips and tricks to make your own version of bolognese sauce even better. You'll find the recipe in the comments below. Bear in mind that I'm using a five litre or one and a quarter gallon pot and three kilograms or six pounds of meat. You can follow the recipe to make a large batch of sauce like I do, or just cut back the quantity to suit your needs and the size of your pot. This recipe will give you about 11 or 12 meals for four people. I always prefer to cook a larger batch because this recipe is not complicated, but it does need time to cook. So one of the benefits of cooking with a large quantity is that it takes about the same amount of time to produce a large quantity as it does a small quantity. Another benefit is that there is a greater consistency of flavour between batches. Also, cooking a larger quantity and batching and freezing the unused quantity makes it so much quicker to make a meal later on. It takes a few hours to cook bolognese sauce, but only 15 minutes or so to defrost the sauce using a microwave oven. Just a bit of background, my mother was born in Bologna in the north of Italy, which is where the bolognese sauce, or ragù alla bolognese in Italian, gets its name from. And my grandfather was a restaurateur in Bologna. This recipe is an authentic bolognese sauce with some optional add-ins that our family like. If you're interested in what is considered to be the absolute authentic ragù alla bolognese, there is a link below which will take you to the Bologna Chamber of Commerce website where the recipe is registered. Our family recipe is almost identical to this, however. To begin, we'll heat up some olive oil and some unsalted butter in a pot over medium heat. Then we'll add our diced pancetta or bacon and cook it until it's nice and crispy. Now let's add in our finely chopped onion, carrots and celery. We'll cook these until they're nice and softened, which takes about five to seven minutes. It's not traditional to add garlic to bolognese sauce. I don't, but if that's your thing, now's the time to add it. Next, we'll add our ground beef to the same pot and cook it until it's beautifully browned, breaking it apart with a spoon as it cooks. We don't want any meatballs in the mix. The meat needs to be separated into the smallest pieces. I add about half a kilogram or one pound of beef at a time. It makes cooking the beef so much easier. It's time to start building the flavor. Add the mixed herbs. A note on the mixed herbs. This is absolutely not traditional for bolognese sauce, but it's our family tradition and it adds a small amount of background flavor. Now add the freshly grated nutmeg. A note on the nutmeg. It's not in the registered recipe, but a small amount of nutmeg is a pretty common addition in this sauce in Bologna. So I'm gonna say that it is traditional to add nutmeg, but optional. Add the red wine, white wine is perfectly acceptable if you prefer, and the beef stock to the pot. And I have a preference personally for beef stock powder, but you can use your own preferred kind of stock, liquid, cubes, whatever. And use chicken stock if you prefer. To really amp up the flavor of the sauce, we're going to add in some tomato paste. This will give our bolognese sauce that beautiful rich color and depth of flavor. The idea is not to have a tomato sauce with meat added, but rather a meat sauce with some tomato added. This may look like a lot of tomato paste that I'm adding, but in these quantities, it only adds color and enriches the flavor without tasting tomato-y. Now it's time to bring it all together. Add some extra water. I add all the water I need at this point and allow it to reduce over time to the desired amount. If you find that the sauce is getting too dry or pasty, just add some extra water. If you've overdone the water, don't remove the excess, just let it reduce with extra time. To minimize waste, I add water to the tomato paste jars. Shake them around and tip the contents into the sauce. That way I get all those bits of tomato paste that have stubbornly remained in the jar. 
Again, we have another family tradition that is not traditional for bolognese sauce, and that is the addition of bay leaves. So at this time, I add bay leaves, which again adds some extra complexity to the flavor without dominating it. If you're going traditional, leave out the bay leaves. I remove the bay leaves when the sauce is cooked and just before I add the pasta. They're not meant to be served with the dish. After simmering for about an hour, our bolognese sauce is looking absolutely delicious, but there's a little bit more to do. I now add a glass of full cream milk and stir it through. Milk works wonders in bolognese sauce. Initially, its lactic acid and calcium content tenderize the meat beautifully. Furthermore, milk acts as a harmonizing agent, balancing the flavors of the wine and tomato while also imparting a lusciously creamy texture and enhancing richness. I find that between the bacon, the stock, the tomato paste, and all the other ingredients, I don't need to add any extra seasoning. It's always a good idea to taste the sauce though and adjust the seasoning to your taste if needed. The only thing now left to do is to cook this sauce for up to four hours, stirring it every 15 minutes. That's the hard part of cooking this sauce. But for every hour that the sauce cooks, it develops more depth of flavor and there's simply no substitute for time. Our authentic bolognese sauce is ready to be enjoyed. The best way to serve pasta with any sauce is to put the sauce into a saute pan or even a wok and then add the pasta. The Italians have a saying, add the pasta to the sauce, not the sauce to the pasta. In Bologna, it's also traditional to serve this sauce with a long flat pasta like fettuccine or tagliatelle. You can also serve it with tube pasta like penne or rigatoni. Contrary to most beliefs, it is not traditional to serve the sauce with spaghetti. The ratio of pasta to sauce is all wrong with spaghetti. And one problem with spaghetti is that you tend to wear the sauce when the spaghetti unravels from your fork. It doesn't tend to do that with tagliatelle or fettuccine. Now it's time to mix the sauce and the pasta together so that the pasta is evenly coated. Add some of the pasta water to the sauce whilst mixing. The pasta water has the added salt and the starch that's been released from the pasta whilst cooking. This pasta water, when mixed with the sauce, emulsifies the oils in the sauce and creates a wonderfully silky consistency and adds a restaurant quality finish to the pasta. Then top the pasta with a generous sprinkle of parmesan cheese, or as it's called in Italian, parmigiano reggiano. And if you are wondering, it is correctly pronounced Parmigiano Reggiano with a hard G. It's not Parmigiano or Parmesan. There is no J sound in Italian. The J sound is more of a French sound. I've made a video on how to cook pasta like a pro. The link's on the screen now. I promised you some tips on how to make your sauce more like restaurant quality, so here goes. Tip number one, extra cooking time. Whether you use this recipe or you have your own favorite meat style recipe, there is simply no substitute for cooking time to improve the flavor. Add some extra water to the sauce, stir it every 15 minutes or so, and just give it extra time to develop. You'll be amazed at how different a sauce tastes after a few hours of cooking. Tip number two, the pasta. When the pasta is cooked, add it to the sauce and then add some pasta water, which emulsifies the oil in the sauce and binds the sauce and pasta together, giving it a dry and pasty finish. The added pasta water rehydrates the mixture and leaves the pasta with a smooth and silky finish. Tip number three, cook much more than you need. There is just economies of scale doing this. It doesn't take much more time to make a large batch as it does a small batch, and this sauce keeps well in the freezer. Tip number four, the oil on top. Don't throw the oil out, it's full of flavor. If you follow the next tip, you'll see the easiest way to handle the oil and distribute it evenly through the sauce. Tip number five, fridge it first. The sauce tastes even better if left in the fridge for a day or two after cooking. 
When the cooking is finished, put the lid on the sauce and allow it to cool to a safe temperature before placing the pot in the fridge. You don't want to let the sauce cool completely for hours outside the fridge because that's not an entirely safe thing to do. I typically put the sauce in the fridge after about a couple of hours of cooling, but I keep it away from other food in the fridge that might take in the heat from the warm pot. In a day or so, I take the sauce out of the fridge and I portion it into takeaway style food containers. You'll notice that after cooling in the fridge that the oil has solidified on top of the sauce. Don't be tempted to remove the oil. Just break it up and mix it through the rest of the sauce. That way it will be evenly split between the portions you're putting into containers. Ultimately, the oil emulsifies and mixes evenly into the sauce and pasta. And believe me, there's tons of flavor in that oil. I tend to use 750 milliliter containers, which in Australia is a medium sized container. I put about 650 grams of sauce in each container. From this batch, I'll get around 12 tubs of sauce with each tub being one meal for four people. The benefit of having the sauce frozen in ready to use containers is that I only have to defrost the sauce, which I normally do in the microwave oven. This is a process that takes about 15 minutes from frozen. This process is a whole lot quicker than making the sauce from scratch each time. At the rate that my family consume this sauce, I find that between pasta with bolognese sauce and other things that I cook with this sauce, like lasagna, I tend to find that I'm cooking up a big batch of this sauce every eight weeks or so. This amount of sauce in each tub is the perfect amount of sauce to add to a standard box or pack of pasta, with the standard pack of pasta being about 500 grams or one pound. Thank you so much for watching. My name's Andrew from Food Good. I hope you give this recipe a try in your own kitchen. And if you've enjoyed this video and recipe, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon for more delicious recipes and share it with your friends. I'll see you next time. Thank you.